Come on, when we get food to eat. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another Chewing mm -hmm. Chat. I'm Ron Rayfield, and this is Justine Dorn. And as you may have seen over on Early American, the onion rings from 1802. <laughs> I got my exercise for the night. <laughs> Good job, Ron. Thank you. We got early 1800s onion rings. Have but a seat. We, well, thank you. We could not make a whole meal out of just onion rings. <laughs> so we are. We thought, okay, what else are we gonna eat with this dish? We decided to put together some seasonal food. We have a salad, a salad and onion rings, and then afterwards we have some fruit from our garden. We got strawberries, and then underneath that, you can't see yet, but underneath we have melon. Cantaloupe, which is a yep. melon. Yep. And we're going to be eating the onion rings with mustard. Oh, yeah. The original receipt recommends to eat it with mustard mixed with butter, but that sounds disgusting. Oh, yeah. That sounds... Even I don't <laughs> think that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. So we're just having it with regular old mustard. Old mustard. <laughs> old mustard, nothing old mustard. fancy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so let's dive into this salad and these onion rings, Ron. Is it my turn or your turn to say grace? So... Uh, you go ahead. I think All it's right. your turn. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful fresh meal that my beautiful woman has prepared. And thank you for the cool weather. The rain came through a while ago and that was very mm. nice. Yes. Amen. Amen. We actually have the door open right now. I'm not sweating today. Right. Which is wonderful. <laughs> it's good. And then we have kind of a cold meal too, which is yeah. great. <laughs> okay, well, so let's try out these onion right. rings, Ron. And these aren't just any onion rings. These are cheesy... Parmesan. Onion rings with Parmesan in them. The Parmesan's in the breading or mm -hmm. the batter. Mm. Not good. I like that. These are pretty good. Mm. And you got to eat one while ago. I seen that. I did. <laughs> Not fair. I always start before him. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Mm. Yeah, these are good. I like that batter. Nice and crunchy. You know what's weird? I can't taste the Parmesan that much. I can't either. I think mm. it might be for texture. It's really crunchy. Hmm. Maybe. No, oh, get on there. Mm-hmm. Get on there and get in my belly. Get in my belly. Hmm. Hmm. I quite like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. these are good. I want some water. Mm-hmm. Do you have water? I'd like some, please. <laughs> Would you like me to tell them a little bit about the onion ring history? Tell them and tell me because I don't know anything about onion ring history. <laughs> well, most people think onion rings originate from the early 1900s, you know, around the World's Fair mm. time, mm. where the snow or the snow cone and yeah. waffles and all that stuff come from, the fair food, or the waffle cakes, like the <laughs> cone cake. But these are from 1802. And there's even speculation that they come back from way before then, mm -hmm. in the 1400s, during King Louis XI. Rumor has it he had, was looking for a new snack and one of his chefs conjured up onion rings, battered and deep fried, and he didn't like them so he had the chef killed. No. That has to be just a myth. <laughs> I mean, it makes kind of sense because it appears mm -hmm. way back then and it doesn't appear again for a couple hundred years. The 15th century? Yeah, the 15th century. Um, he oh. was in power like in the 1460s. Mm. Mm. And uh, so it makes sense. If he didn't like it, then they <laughs> scrapped the idea and then 200 years later or something, somebody else came up with it. Mm. But anyways, by pop culture belief from the early 1900s, that's false. This is from 1802, so 100 that, years before that. Yeah, so that proves that they aren't new, because this re this receipt is from the early 1800s, but mm -hmm. no one knows exactly when onion rings were invented. Right. It's just one of those foods that's so cheap and common that oh. no one said, Hear he, hear he, on this day we fried onions! Hey, my bell. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. 
No, no one's done that, so we don't know exactly when, but it's a very old dish. It's just fried onions. I can see this being in taverns. Hmm. Like you go in for a nail, mm -hmm. you know, after you've rode 20 miles and there you're some fried onions, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. It's just battered fried onions. Mm hmm. Cheap and easy to make. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And you don't even need a fork, you just use your hands. Yep, they had a good amount <laughs> of fried food back then. Yeah. Mm hmm. The Scottish were behind a lot of fried food. Yeah, I like fried chicken. Yeah. I come from Scotland originally. Originally, hundreds of years ago. But fried onions with batter? I don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> Let's see how good this stuff From is. long before um, mm. our time. Long oh, before, yeah. though. <laughs> That's good, too. Got one more decent and then we'll dig into this salad. So our salads, they just have mixed lettuces, we have cold cuts of meat, we got cheese, mm -hmm. and then our dressing is just classic oil, vinegar, and pepper, and salt. Lots. Extra pepper on mine. Yes, we like, we love black pepper. And Ron put corn on his. I like corn. Mm -hmm. That's okay. <laughs> you are entitled to like corn. <laughs> you know, sweet corn, it's ready to go right off the stalk. Mm -hmm. You don't have to boil it. Mm -hmm. You can if you want to, if you want it to be really, really hot. Mm. But you can just eat it right there. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. I just shave it off the stalk, throw it mm -hmm. in my salad. Right. So that's another thing. People don't think that onion rings are that old of a dish. People don't think salads are that old of a dish. Mm -hmm. I think when a lot of people picture historical food, they just think, oh, meat pies and roasted potatoes and a cup of ale or something like that. <laughs> You know, or a giant cake this big. But they were obsessed with salads back then. Absolutely obsessed. I cannot throw a rock without hitting a <laughs> salad recipe from this time period. Mm -hmm. And there's at least 20 different salad dressing recipes from the early 1800s and late 18th century that I have found. That's a lot of salad dressing. So they really loved their salads. When it was that time of the year when they had... Uh, lettuces and radishes and beets and whatever else you want to put in a salad, whenever that was seasonally available, they went crazy for it. They would just put anything and everything in the salad, kind of like we do today. Yeah. <laughs> they probably got tired yeah. of eating old smoky meats. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Mm -hmm. And good job on the onion rings. We will have to have them again someday. Sure. <laughs> it's cheap. Add this to the list of tries. You guys should try this. Mm hmm Yeah. You should try this because I think most households would agree with it. <clears throat> it's not really exotic. It's not strange. Who wouldn't love onion rings? Mm hmm I'll tell you what would be real awesome. Chicken mm. wings. Or not chicken wings, but chicken rings. If you can make the chicken in a ring, I'd eat it. Really? Yeah. It'd be, it'd be cute. And I just... Burger King does that. They sell chicken. Who's he? Burger King. He's the king of burgers. <laughs> Is there a country called burgers? There's turkey. It's somewhere in Europe. Oh, okay. Huh. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> Is he related to Dairy Queen? Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's another kingdom in Europe. <laughs> so I have a whole bunch of different salad recipes that I wrote down. I'm not going to read out every single one because I'll bore you to death. Okay, on to number 35, salad Whoa. dressing. No, I won't. I won't do that, but I'll just read you a couple of them. This is a chew and chat, not a chew and nap. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let, let me share a couple of them with you. Okay. Here is a uh, salad mixture, as it's called, from the Cook's Oracle, published in 1817. Take white wine vinegar salt, boil them up together and remove the scum, beat up the yolks of six eggs, strain through a sieve, and add to that three tablespoons of mustard and a pint of olive oil or a sweet almond oil. So yes, they did use um, olive oil and almond oil in cooking during this time period. Mix this thoroughly together in a mortar and put it to your vinegar in a stew pan 
and you're supposed to cook it over a really low heat. And not a high heat because you don't want the eggs to get scrambled. So they did use the traditional oils that we now associate with salad dressing. Even in salads back then, <coughs> they used olive oil and sweet almond oil? Now that's interesting. <laughs> I don't know about that. Really? Well, that sure sounds good. Okay. Well, it also has vinegar in it. So I have never made that particular dressing, but the fact that it has so many eggs in it, I picture it being kind of a creamy dressing. And mm -hmm. uh, olive oil has been around since before Jesus was born. Um, now in this time period, olive oil in America was a thing. You could often get it at the medicine doctor because you would use it for your skin, but you could also get it to be used in cooking. That's pretty neat. Yeah. We got some dry skin, just, you know. Right, right, yep. It was prescribed as a medicine and also it was used for eating. So on to the next one. I found a receipt for how to make uh, pickled cucumbers to add to a salad. Mm -hmm. Cucumber vinegar from American Domestic Cookery published in 1823, or at least it's the 1823 edition. Pair and slice 15 large cucumbers. So you're supposed to remove the skin from the cucumbers and cut them up. Put them in a stone jar with three pints of vinegar, four large onions, uh, some shallots, some garlic, some salt, some pepper, cayenne, and you're supposed to let that stand for four days. After four days, you boil the whole mixture up. I guess it needs four days for it to get flavored. And then when it's cold, you strain it and filter it. Um, it says through pepper, but I think that means through a sieve. Keep it in small bottles and you add it to salad or you can eat it on the side with meat. That sounds really good with a salad. I'd even try that. I, I would try that. Pickled spicy cucumbers to eat with a salad. That sounds so good. Can we make that please? We will make it. Someday we will make it. Guaranteed you're your money back. I will make that. You hear it say it. Hold it Yes. Too. Yes. I don't know when but I will make it. There's no dill in it though. But that's fine. Okay, so let's look at another uh, salad dressing receipt from the time period. To make a salad sauce from the new practice of cookery, the 1804 edition. Now this one I picked out because there's so many different salad receipts, but this one I picked out because guess what? It has cheese in it. So you're supposed to take the yolk of an egg that's been boiled, hard boiled, and a spoonful of Parmesan cheese that's been grated, and you rub that together with some mustard, some vinegar, a spoonful of ketchup, which in this context probably means mushroom ketchup, and it must be perfectly mixed up, and it has to, all the particles have to be dissolved. Then you add four tablespoons of oil and one of vinegar. You mix that all well together, and boom, you got cheesy, delicious salad sauce. It says it's a grand receipt up top. A London grand receipt. That's because it's probably supposed to be really good. So the writer, the author of this, she's personally recommending it to you that this is a really good receipt. Maybe because it has cheese in it? Hmm. That'd, that'd be my guess. I like that one too. Sounds good. It's got cheese in it. You like it because it has cheese. I love cheese. Everybody knows that. So two things I see in a lot of receipts from this time period, which are really surprising. Lemons are in everything. Yeah, they're obsessed with lemons. Lemons are like weirdly in everything. And even out here mm -hmm. in the fence here, we're poor people, but the townsfolk, they can get it from the river. The yep. things come up from New Orleans, which come from mm -hmm. the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. And yep. It comes up and there's markets and that's how we would get exotic right. things back then. Right. So I get um, a lot of people that ask me, how would they have gotten lemons, you know, here? Lemons don't grow in Missouri. Lemons don't grow in Missouri even in 2022. Right. But if you go to your local grocery store, you can get pineapples. You can get, I don't know, cherries. You can mm -hmm. get oranges. You can get lemons. 
limes, all of these things do not grow in your area, obviously. So how are they in your grocery store right now? Well, it's the same exact way 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. 200 years ago, these things were grown usually in the south, like in Florida, or sometimes yeah. Louisiana, and they would be shipped up to whatever territory had a demand for it. And since we live on the Mississippi River, we actually live in a suburb mm -hmm. of St. Louis, which at the time was a pretty nice sized city. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have had a real hard time getting these things. So it's the same, you know, it's been the same for hundreds of years. Especially with mm -hmm. the amount of river piracy going on, mm -hmm. you can get it for a good price for them guys, the black market. I'm not even gonna ask Ron how he knows that. So no. anyway, on to the next receipt. It's cheaper, why not? Okay, anyway, on to the next He's receipt. To dress salad from the female economist published in 1810. So you take a hard boiled egg, you put the yolk into a salad dish, you mash the yolk with the back of a spoon, so you're just using the yolk, mm. you mix it with a little tiny dash of water, then you add some oil to it, or melted butter, or a little bit of mustard, or actually no, you have to add the mustard on top of it, and a sufficient quantity of vinegar. Now the salad itself here, it says it's made up of lettuce with mustard greens and cress. That means watercress, which I heard is very healthy for you. So you cut that all up, you mix it together well, you can add to it cut up celery, radishes, it says, are any other kind of salad herbs that you want to add to it? That sounds like a really healthy salad. Yeah. It also recommends that you send it up to the table with onions, um, raw onions in a saucer to serve with it. Ron hates onions, so he yeah. just said, ew. <laughs> um, it says, don't mix the onions in there, but put them separately in a bowl. Uh, maybe because it, you don't want the salad to have an oniony flavor, and some people just don't like onions at the table. It also says optional, but an anchovy may be cut mm. up really, really small and you can mix it with the dressing if you approve of it. So that means if you like the taste of fish. And Ron doesn't. Yeah, and Ron, Ron does not <laughs> like onions, nor does he like anchovies. And it also goes on to recommend another entirely different type of salad. It says celery can be dressed the same way. So instead of having lettuce and all that, you can just chop up some celery real nice and you can dress it with that same dressing. Oh, and also says you can add some beetroot. So there you go. These... Are you sure it doesn't say anything else? No, no that's, that's a it. Long one. <laughs> well, these guys, they really <clears throat> like salads, you know? I mean, I can imagine um, back in the day when it was a little harder to get seasonal vegetables. Um, because things like lettuce are really hard to transport. Mm -hmm. So it would have been pretty unusual for you to get lettuce in wintertime um, because it rots in a boat, so it wouldn't right. have made it up there. So I can imagine after <clears throat> months and months of just not having fresh vegetables that you'd go crazy on the lettuce, the oh. celery, whatever. They all sound good except for that last one. Well, the yeah. The and the anchovies. Uh. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, Ron don't like that. I'll eat these. Cooked. I'll eat it. <laughs> I like cooked onions. And I like yeah. crunchies. Yeah, he likes the little fried onions that you put on salads too sometimes. You mentioned ketchup and catsup. Well, mm -hmm. there's a difference. Mm -hmm. um, Jobs my memory is something I once read. Okay, go into it. So, catsup mm -hmm. is usually mushroom base, mm -hmm. like a state sauce. That In this just time today. period. It yes. Is. But there's also a tomato-based ketchup. I, I remember seeing from the early 19th century mm -hmm. a recipe for a tomato-based ketchup and it claimed to be the first one. I don't know if it really is, but mm -hmm. uh, so some, some tomato-based ketchups do go pretty far back, but mm -hmm. today we're using, we did use mustard because I love mustard. Mm -hmm. Right. I think she loves mustard. I equally. love mustard. <laughs> so that's why we didn't use ketchup. For those of you, because I know mm -hmm. some people are like, I only eat ketchup, I hate mustard, and then there's some people, you know, right. I only eat mustard, I hate ketchup. So that's that, that's why we... Right. But they did have a tomato base back then. It might not yes. have been as popular. But it was brand spanking new. <laughs> and, it, and it wasn't like today's. It had, like, beer in it, and I do think i seen one of them. It said, like, you're supposed to pulverize or mince up the anchovies. Oh, great. So it has a really 
strange flavor, but it has a tomato base in it. Mm. So I probably wouldn't like it, but mm. I just thought maybe that was interesting. Last night, I'm not even joking. <clears throat> Last night, I had a dream that I made a video that was all tomato foods. So obviously I got to do it now. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the next video or maybe the video after that, but within a close amount of time from today, I'm going to release a video that just shows early 1800s tomato receipts because people did cook with tomatoes back then. There's kind of like this, this thing where people say that people thought tomatoes were poisonous and so no one ate it until relatively recently. Mm -hmm. Some people thought tomatoes were poisonous because they're in the nightshade family and they're this bright neon red color. But by this time period, by the early 1800s, that wasn't really believed anymore. Um, maybe 200 years previous to this, it was more of a thing and no one really ate tomatoes. Plus, tomatoes are a new world fruit. <laughs> fruit got seeds. Yeah, it's technically a fruit. I wouldn't add it to a fruit salad, but it's a fruit. <laughs> I wouldn't eat it with that, let no. me say that. But it's technically, legally, a fruit. Um, so by this time period, some people were eating um, tomatoes. It was just so new that it was kind of strange. I tell you what, they probably got hungry mm. enough and that's all they had. So they took a chance and said, oh, I'm not dead. Oh, I kind of like it. <laughs> so I'm going to release a video that just has a compilation of early 1800s tomato receipts. I know two off the top of my head right now. One of them is uh, eggs, scrambled eggs cooked with tomatoes, which is such a modern sounding Ew. dish. No, my mom cooked that for me when I was a little kid. Do the tomatoes no. stay whole or... Uh, is it like tomato sauce and eggs? I'm not sure because I've never actually made it. Oh. But I've read about it. So it's scrambled eggs cooked with tomatoes. And that's an actual period receipt. And then I have a recipe for a tomato sauce that's supposed to be consumed either with hot or cold meat. So I don't know if that's supposed to go over a steak. I don't think so. I'm going to cook it with sausages. Look how big this thing is. <laughs> hey, take two. Ugh. <laughs> it's your glasses. Yeah. This is the only time we're going to be holding onions up to our eyes. <laughs> it's the Hello. worst idea, right? Hello. Like, got some weird looking sunglasses. Look like, look like Elton John, probably. He's got some goofy glasses. These are, <laughs> the, these are the only onions that we can afford out on... I mean, these are the only glasses that we can afford out on the frontier. Okay. <laughs> I gotta admit I love the crunchies more than I love the onions, so... The I'm fried gonna, part? Yeah, I'm just gonna eat the fried part now. I've ate enough onions. <laughs> I'll spare you <laughs> the wins tonight. Of <laughs> course, they'll be howling. The seven winds will come a-howling! <laughs> hmm. I'll save that for later. Save it for me? <laughs> Some more of this. This is good. I'm glad you like it. I'm a meat and taters kind of guy, but I do like my greens. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get big and strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this food is so healthy, it makes me want to dance. Put some perk in my step. <laughs> you already you know, right dance. Okay, you're saying I shouldn't dance again. You can dance then. I ain't at the end yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. Can you some more water, please? Yes. Mm. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> also, don't forget, if you are thinking about visiting St. Jen or doing something fun and free, come to St. Jen next weekend. <laughs> August 13th mm -hmm. and 14th is the Jurgapet Arts and Frass, Arts the Arts and Crafts Festival mm -hmm. in Saint in downtown St. Genevieve, Missouri. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We'll be set up there. We'll have my woodworking booth and have a few items on display. Uh, all the houses will probably be open, for what I'm hearing. And uh, Yep, the old uh, 18th and early 19th century houses. All sorts of vendors and booths, mm -hmm. over 200 of them. Uh, good food, uh, there'll be music, mm -hmm. all kinds of neat stuff. So 
looking for something to do. Including us. Come on down and say hi to us. Mm -hmm. We will be working, so. Yeah, we're working because yeah. we're trying to sell Ron's uh, woodwork. Yeah, woodwork. But feel free to stop on by, shake your hand, say hi, and a uh, quick picture if you want. But mm -hmm. last year we were swamped with people, so <laughs> don't think it rude of us if we uh, mm -hmm. if, if we're talking to other people. We were swamped with people interested in Ron's woodwork. I went through 500 mm -hmm. business cards. Which is last great. weekend, or not last weekend, last year that weekend. That is great. That's a lot. And most of the people called, which hmm. was real nice. Right. It's nice because he makes furniture in St. John County, mm -hmm. which is a historical area. So if you yeah. want historically inspired furniture, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> made in America, obviously. I even made some pieces for the museum there. Mm -hmm. The dining table in the, the mirror house. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there was any other. You can't boxes. Yeah, camp bosses for mm -hmm. the old dude. But, you know, all sorts of stuff. Beds, dressers, mm -hmm. dining tables, mm -hmm. little wall sconces like this uh, candle holder here, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Hourglasses. He made this table. He made this, this table. table. He made that. I don't see the candlestick holder. He made all these boxes. Oh, it's up on the shelf. Mm -hmm. He made the dry sink over there, which you yeah. can't see. Um, but he made that. The little writing desk that you have. <clears throat> which I'm thinking about maybe taking that and showing that off. Oh! As an option. I actually think you should. I quite like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a little bit of everything. I mean, he made literally this whole cabin. So, he made the heart. Yeah. I didn't make the bucket. I can't make buckets and I can't no. make chairs. Yeah, that's his weird thing. He cannot make chairs. I don't have the equipment to steam wood oh. or the facility spaces to set mm -hmm. up the equipment to steam wood to bend it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I would love to do it someday or at least try it, but... Uh, it costs a lot of money to get that set up. And it's, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's hardwood you're playing with. A lot of people my age, they're okay mm -hmm. with pine, uh, which is still better than the stuff you're going to get at Ikea, that particle board is just going to fall apart. But right. uh, when you're building a chair and stuff like that, you need to use hardwood, and that's really pricey right now. Mm -hmm. And even pine softwood is real pricey, but... That's another thing. Ron's furniture is priced very low. Because it's... Because he just does delivery around here. The people around here can't afford $10,000 bookshelves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not a fine woodworker. I'm mm -hmm. a rustic woodworker. So there's a difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's nice stuff. I'm not saying it's not, not nice stuff. So he's always trying to keep the price reasonable. But I'm not going to make a $3,000 table mm -hmm. out of walnut that's slick as ice. I'm, I'm not that kind of woodworker. I don't use machi you know, big machines that mm. you know make it nice and smooth and all right. that. Right. No, it's all hand done. So mine's more of like the $600 range for a nice harvest farm table. Right. It's what the people around here can afford. Right. It's for the everyday working class family's house. If you want square head nails on your tabletop, I'll do that too. Mm-hmm. In fact, Justine helped me put the nails on the table that's going to be at church bed next weekend on display. I did that. She hammered every nail in. Mm-hmm. I marked them out, of course, and then... Somehow I'm just really good at beating stuff with a hammer. Yeah, she is. Don't. Please don't. They'll, they'll see you. Oh. <laughs> and I help him paint some of the things, too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Candy helps us, too. Yeah, she's been helping us. Mm -hmm. We've got some really beautiful little, I just call them little boxes. Mm -hmm. Little shelves and mm -hmm. stuff. Little corner cabinets mm -hmm. that have different uh, little designs painted on them. Folk, Flowers. Folk, what do you call that? Folk art? Yeah, I would just call it a primitive folk art. So she's been guiding us on what to do. She's been saying, I think you should do that color. I think you should do it here. And her help has been very valuable. And we're learning too. We are learning. We're kind of like Candy's apprentices. Yeah. <laughs> the little corner mm -hmm. cabinet with the punch tin, that was fun to do. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, yeah, so he can do punch tin now too. Mm -hmm. He also can make rope beds. Yeah, I make modern beds too. Yeah. Honestly, Ron can make just about anything except chairs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he can get the 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 kits that come. Yeah, I, I can get mm -hmm. the the kits from the factory unfinished, and I can put them together and make and put the finish on to match the table that I make for whoever. Mm -hmm. That's normally what we do. But he can't make a chair from scratch. <laughs> no. Chairs have always been his weakness. Mm, I'm tired of eating salad. It's really good, but I can't get to the end of it. Mm -hmm. I want to eat that. I want to eat that too. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going for it. Mmm, that's so good. I love strawberries. Well, vinegar and oil and strawberry don't mix. Oh, yeah, make wash sure your palate. Yeah, mince your mouth out for each one. Especially onion rings. Ew! Just, mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> Okay, now I'm ready. These are so good. Yeah. The redder, the better. Right. They're more ripe. <laughs> I have two secrets to my health. I actually know three secrets to my health. I'm number one. Four secrets to my health. <laughs> number one is Ron. Thank you. So, number two is I eat a ton of strawberries. And strawberries have a lot of vitamin C in them. A lot. More than an orange. <laughs> yeah, for their weight, they have more vitamin yeah. C than an orange per does. Per volume. Mm -hmm. So it's a really easy way to get vitamin C and nutrients in your body. So whenever they're in season, I eat every single day a big bowl of strawberries. Okay, so two left. My other secret is I take insanely hot baths. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like crazy, crazy hot bath. She boils like a lobster. I boil myself like a lobster. <laughs> it's like you want some potatoes and carrots to throw in there too while right. it's bubbling. Yep, it's Justine soup. But I swear <laughs> that is what keeps me healthy because I swear it like it boils the viruses and stuff inside of my body too. So mm -hmm. whenever I feel kind of iffy that day, I'll take a really hot bath, and then I feel great. Mm -hmm. You know, because whenever you get a fever, your body naturally wants to raise the temperature so that it can cook the viruses because these viruses can't live or they have trouble living at, and reproducing after a certain temperature. Mm -hmm. So I just help it along. But I just really like hot baths, so I take insanely hot baths. <laughs> Probably over 100 degrees. Oh yeah, my water's on the fire for two hours and then we dump it in there. <laughs> But she had her way, we stick the fire under the tub. <laughs> yes, in a in a black iron cauldron. I'd just be sitting in there eating my strawberries and bubbling away. I like really hot baths. I don't. <laughs> no, Ron, Ron's a bit of a sissy when it comes to uh, sissy. hot baths. I know, sissy. When it comes to hot baths, Ron. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I just go down the creek, hop in the hole. Okay, and so my last secret is I drink a lot of water. A lot of water and I'm a little I can I can see how I can be a little bit of an obnoxious person because I'm constantly telling Ron and I'm constantly telling members of my family are you making sure that you're drinking enough water <laughs> make sure you drink water and water is like my cure-all for everything so Ron will say oh I have a headache I'll say it's because you didn't drink enough water drink more water you know, I tell that I tell that to him at least two times a day. You have to drink water. The problem is, and you all know this. You've seen. I should me. drink water. I yes, drink some water. I sweat so much; it's hard to keep up. Mm -hmm. I need one of them helmets with like water bottles mm -hmm. up here, and you know, hose going in my mouth and. Yeah, constantly long, all day. Work. <laughs> constantly all day long. Well, it's right. gonna go dry. Right. You gotta ration it. <laughs> 
ration it. <laughs> One gallon a day. I'm not gonna ration not five. water. <laughs> this cantaloupe is delicious. Mm. I love cantaloupe. Mm -hmm. My dad hates cantaloupe. What? That, my dad will eat anything, and I mean anything, except cantaloupe. It's the what? Only thing he, that's the only <laughs> thing he hates. Why? I don't know. Maybe a cantaloupe beat him up or something <laughs> when he was a kid. I don't know. I have no idea why he hates Beat cantaloupe. him up? <laughs> I mean, I, it don't taste good. Oh, gross. man, those wild cantaloupes. You can't trust them. They just roll down the hill. They knock your foot out. You fall down and hit your head. I mean, how can you not like it? I like it. It's juicy. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. It's... I don't, I don't get it. That's the only thing he won't eat. He'll possum, raccoon, skunk, whatever. He has a he has this world famous recipe for squirrel, but he won't eat that. My dad's a big fan of that show, Bizarre Food, or something like that. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, sometimes on the Travel Channel that travels mm. to like these mm. third world countries and eats these delicacies. Mm. Yeah. Or what they call delicacies, like bugs, <laughs> hmm. intestines, and tongues, and eyeballs, and yeah. Hold up. Ooh. Ooh. Tongue is good. No. That's not we've, strange We've had food. discussion on this channel before. <laughs> intestines? We tongue tacos. First of all, you eat intestines and in sausage. This is true. If it's real sausage and not the fake casing. <clears throat> now, I picked that puppy there up. About a month ago, that's a sausage stuffer mm -hmm. from the 18th century mm -hmm. or 19th century. That's the poor man sausage stuffer. There's a couple different versions. <clears throat> they got some with a crank handle, and this Let's one see. is just you push it. It's a funnel. It's probably dirty inside. This is a ye old sausage stuffer. Ye it old. also looks like extremely primitive and scary medical equipment. Yes. Like the absolute worst syringe ever. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the later Victorian ones, they have the hand crank handles. And I'm sure in some, like, really wealthy households in this time period, they had some oh, yeah. sort of hand crank handle. But for your everyday working man in the early 1800s and 18th century, this was a sausage stuffer. So you you put your um, casings, they call it casings, which mm -hmm. is your sheep um, intestines on here. Bunch it up, tie it mm -hmm. off at the end. Put your meat that you have chopped up really finely, unless you were at sp had an expensive grinder, and then use this plunger here to push it. And you want to keep the casing tight because you want your sausage links to be, you know, it wants to stretch it. Yeah, you want to make sure they're even too. That yeah. The links don't have like a balloon in them, and then an empty pocket in another part. And then you simply just twist it when you want the mm. link to end. You can cut the links off. Mm. So maybe one day we'll show that, and yep. we can smoke some sausage in the smoker. Yep, this is the most easy, no-nonsense technique. You literally just... <laughs> and then behold, you have sausage. Never let Justine operate on you or give you medicine after seeing that. So when she says, oh, I read it in the book, trust me. Can we put Don't. this in our noses? No. It might be good for you, though. No. Okay. Now some of you are like, wait a minute, Ron said smoker. I'm gonna show a smokehouse this fall. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. It's a little bitty one. Yes. But we will hang the sausages in there and smoke. Yes, we sure will, won't we? When the time is right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now make sure you drink enough water, Ron. I'm eating this. It's got water in it. <laughs> that is true. Melons have water. That's true. I won't have part of the rind. It's really crunchy. It doesn't taste weird. <laughs> well, sorry. <laughs> I don't like the rind. No one eats the rind. I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, I hear it. <laughs> anyway, on to the next slice. <laughs> That's good, there's no rind okay. on it. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Everyone watching, make sure you drink enough water today. Drink water. Drink water. And eat fruit with vitamin C in it. And maybe, possibly, unless you have a heart condition, take a really nice warm bath. No, yeah, don't cook yourself. <laughs> we also have some very bad news to speak mm. up today. Yes. We have lost two chickens in the last 24 hours. Yes. One of our two surviving large hens mm -hmm. and one of our new uh, chicks. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. new chick, we found his body 
there's no external inju injuries or anything. Yeah. So we're not sure what killed him. The big hen, there's nothing left. There's no feathers, mm -hmm. no nothing. So I think a hawk may have gotten her and just did a clean swipe and took Maybe. her. Maybe. So that's... Or the feathers are in the woods and we just yeah, don't know. We just haven't seen them yet. So with the chick, um, when Ron went to look in the coop, the chick was already dead. And they're kind of teenagers by this point. They're not little tiny chicks anymore. They're almost... They're half, they're half grown, yeah. They're kind of like Cornish hen size now, almost. What'd you say? I would say so. I'm okay. Okay. Um, so it was already dead. I put on gloves. I, I looked at it. I examined it really well. I felt its neck. Did have a broken neck. Had no visible external injuries. It's... Everything looked completely normal. Mm -hmm. um, so the only thing I could possibly think of is either it had some kind of internal issue, like some kind of intestinal blockage, it was born with a heart defect. Its rear end was clean too. Yeah, its rear end was completely yeah. clean, so it wasn't compacted <clears throat> it, um, on the outside and it couldn't poop or anything like that. Now there's also something that kills a lot of chickens where if there's a, vi um, a virus like these little tiny worms in water in the water that mm -hmm. they drink, they can get sick. But it's so weird because all the chicks look so healthy. Mm -hmm. Usually, when chickens get that, they kind of are really sluggish and they they stop kind of eating and they're just really depressed looking for a few right. days. And we change the water every day. We change the water every day. Yeah, and we rinse out the their water bowl too. So, and the other chicks are as happy and healthy as can be. They're flying, whatever, so I... They're kind of mean. Yeah, they peck at us now. So, I, but I kind of think it was just this one particular chick. It had something was wrong with just the way it, it was. You know, I don't know mm -hmm. exactly, but... So anyways, that's our sad We'll news. put antibiotics in the water just in case. Yeah. But the other chicks are as happy as can be. Hmm. We put the last big hen in with them. Oh yeah. She's teaching them manners. <laughs> yeah, so what happened is now we're down to one adult chicken out of the original four. Mm -hmm. And I think it was this, it might be the same thing that, that killed the other ones. So our neighbor found a den on their property. Yeah, it's a pretty big den. It's a very see. big den, <clears throat> like kind of scary. <laughs> I think it's maybe a bobcat. Yeah, the neighbors were saying they don't know if it's a bobcat or a mountain lion, like a little young mountain lion. Mm -hmm. But it's probably a bobcat like we thought because, and it's not a fox, this is way too big for a fox. In person, it's huge. There's been a bobcat sighting near right. here too, about a right. month ago, so that kind of makes us think that as well. Mm -hmm. When I say near here, I mean our backyard. <laughs> there was a big, big... Blackish brown bobcat, definitely a male, um, or just a huge, massive, well fed female in the kind of the backyard of our cabin. So that's a little suspicious. <laughs> yeah, and it's our neighbor's property, so we can't just go there and look in the den mm -hmm. with a light or anything. You know, it's up to them now what but they want to do. They're going to place some cameras up and right. maybe to catch a picture of it, see what we're dealing with here. Right, see if we're dealing with some man eating mountain lion. Out comes a bear. <laughs> Out comes a bear. Oh. <laughs> right. Jeez, don't do like that. Mm hmm. Mm. This was a good meal. Yeah. But Ron was very upset last night. Yeah, because we raised them. Yeah. And they died on our watch. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping that no more of the big ones would get eaten and then. Right, and poor Ron, he he couldn't even eat. I lost my really. appetite, I was so mad. Yeah, he couldn't even eat dinner. He took a few bites of it and he was like, nope, I can't. I was mad. Yeah, he was he was mad. I think he wants revenge against whatever did it. <laughs> Get my, my rifle loaded up. <laughs> and I'm gonna so, go on a hunt. <laughs> they robbed me. Of chicken nuggets and scrambled eggs. Oh, stop. No, it's not about the chicken nuggets. We raised those chickens. There are chickens. They're future chicken nuggets. Though. And they follow us everywhere we go. So I really wasn't going to eat them. But... No, we weren't. Ron's just being silly. He loves those chickens and he won't admit it. <laughs>
That's why he couldn't eat yesterday. But so now we're down to one adult chicken. We did not want this lone adult chicken to just roam around outside while there's still obviously this man eating 5,000 pound grizzly bear roaming around. So we put this, so <laughs> hopefully not. That escalated. So we put um, our last hen in with our brand new coop with our teenage um, chicks mm -hmm. until either whatever it is, is figured out and caught or until all of them are big adults and we can just release them now and mm -hmm. hope. Because if she's just by herself, she don't really stand much of a chance. She doesn't have anybody to outrun. Uh huh. All you gotta do is outrun the government. <laughs> Don't worry, I'd never outrun you. I'd just sit yeah, down. Yeah, because I'm a pretty fast runner, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sit down and let them take me and you can be free. No. Well, you just run. said you run faster than no, me. No, we're a team. Okay, you're sitting with me then. We're a team. Go get you. <laughs> I will not let anything get you. What are you doing? That's my axe, what are you doing with that? I'm just showing you, I'm gonna keep you safe. Uh, I just pulled the Okay, that's not outside. safe. <laughs> what if you I'm, trip? I'm gonna, what if you trip? What would I trip on? I'm just made, I'm just telling him I'm gonna keep him safe. So I'm just gonna keep this right here. Just in case the man eating lion five thousand pound bear. Oh, I got my own right here though. No! Oh. Okay, come get him out lion. We're ready for you. Do you know our address? Come over here. <laughs> You're a kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> Robo, a chicken. I just want to play. Smell. Yeah, I just want to play. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna hop off here. Yes. Cause uh, they hunt at night, so we're gonna go hunting. But I'm taking that. I ain't taking this. So, anyways, thank you all for watching. This has been a great meal, and it's always great talking with you guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you for all of the amazing views and comments and compliments and we just reached 700,000 on early american <laughs> yes. and we're about to cross over i don't know what it is 30 something thousand on frontier patreon i think 37,000 yes thank so you. thank you so very much did you just say we're about to go hunting for this thing yeah they hunt at night time get your lantern i mean i'm not that brave well you stay here you keep the you get the fire going. no i'm not gonna let you go I'm by bring yourself home, i'm gonna bring home a midnight snack no, I am not going to let you go by yourself, but I don't want to go. I'll bring this. Okay. Well, let, let's get then. We're, we're going to get. Let's go, love. All right. Bye-bye, everybody.